people that had his ass planted in row one. You know? So, I mean, basketball in turn, man, you know, it, it's not even really fun no more. But I watch it because I'm a sportsman and I like watching sports. But some of the shit that happened in these games and the way the athletes are today, man, I don't even know, man. It, it, it's not even the same like it used to be, man. I like it when it's all about us. My team, your team. You know, I see motherfuckers now these days going to pick the other team player up. Man, you better drop that motherfucker. You know, if that was me, if I was playing, and I seen one of my teammates trying to pick up some money from another team, I would have been smacked this motherfucking hand and said, man, get your ass over here in the huddle, man. You know what I'm saying? Fuck him. Shit. Let him get up on his own. Or let his team pick him up. You know, but it's too much softness, too much uh, togetherness, lovely love, love. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like that shit, man. Competitive, to be competitive, you got to be able to be a complete team player, play with your team, and play for your team, and fight for your team. You know what I'm saying? Fuck the other team. I don't give a fuck if you went out and ate steak dinner with this motherfucker last night. Tonight, he's the piece of steak. We gonna eat. See what I'm saying? And that's how it should be. And that's real. Let me see. Um, um, Vince Rice said, oh, no, um, by the way, we have another Esquad affiliate in the house. He must have heard me talking about him, so he decided to step up in the room. Kabob. We got my main man, Esquad affiliate sports done right. Uh, you know, he's all Minnesota. You know, he's from that city of the Prince himself. King Albert Prince. You got Vince Wright, Esquire affiliate in the house. He said, Cool Sluggo, I got a free golf waiting for for you if you ever come up north in the summer. Oh, okay. So you trying to say Minnesota is bad. It's good. Oh, by the way, man, uh, I'm rude. Um the number to call in today is four oh four six one eight two one one nine. That's four oh four uh, six one eight, right? I had to do it like this because some of y'all probably writing two one one nine, and it's in the chat room. You call up Chief Rocky if you got anything you want to say to him. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, don't call up here trying to be you know rude to me or, or vogus, you know, because um, I, I have a tendency of sitting your ass down. I ain't got to shoot you. I, I put your ass down. That's all to it. You know, I leave all that shooting for everybody else. You know, I got a gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I I have a gun. Yeah, you hear? Yeah, I got a gun. So, you know, just um, sit back and relax. But that's the number. I suppose to have a young lady calling up if she get out of meeting in time. Her name is Z Mullins. Uh, she's big time here in the A. Um, she's a big party planner. Um... She she serve all the entertainers out here as far as um, getting them right for any event they want to have. Uh, she's um, she's big in the uh, NBA and NFL alumni here. The alumni players from the NFL and NBA. She big in that, and she also get that celebrity bowl that um, the number one Chief Rocker go to every year, and that's a big event. This year, X Squad gonna be a part of that. We gonna get our little shirts and we gonna get our lane. And we're going to win that trophy that they be giving out. They give out shit for now. See, Mullins didn't pass out shit for winning. So everybody in X-Squad affiliate here in Atlanta, if you got a bowl game, get ready because we're going to be part of that bowl game with the lovely Z Mullins. And I'm going to tell you something. Z know all the bad women here in the ATL. I guarantee you that. That's real. So big up to Z Mullins. If, um, you, come, if you get out your meeting, baby, just give me that holler and I'll be waiting. But uh, during the meantime, in between time, yeah, um, I feel that uh, San Antonio, they had a game plan. They had strategy, you know. Their defense was smothering Golden State. And the the Barge brothers, one of the Barge brothers wasn't even found yesterday. They still looking for him. They think I think that's the one that's out there on them drugs, you know what I'm saying. He probably is out there, you know, getting high with Pookie somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the other one showed up. You know, only reason he showed up because Kawhi Leonard was out. See, once Kawhi, Kawhi, once Leonard went out the game, right, 
that changed the defensive strategy on who covering who. You know, because when he was in the game, Curry wasn't doing shit. I don't know who was covering Curry when Kawhi was in the game, but when he left the game, then all hell broke loose. Curry just started finding and opening, and they start picking, rolling, and all that, and he was shooting them goddamn three-pointers. But when Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard was in there, shit, that shit was shut down. Golden State was down by 23 points when he left the game and never seen light again. You know what I'm saying? They never seen, they never seen, they never seen light until San Antonio just said, here, take the ball. Here, take the ball. Here, take the ball. They were just giving them the ball. They weren't playing no smothering defense. It was mistakes. It was like, it was like a hot potato. Nobody on San Antonio wanted the ball. It was like a hot potato. Every time you turn around, because Golden State don't play no D like that. I ain't never seen them play no D. You wait till the next series if they make it to the next series. But they're going to make it. It's just me talking, man. Being devil advocate, you know. I don't really want them to go, but they're going to go anyway. But you wait till the next series, and then you show me that they playing any D. Because LeBron James going to take every motherfucker there they got to the hole. And I heard somebody said Jamel McGee is going to be the one that stopped LeBron from coming to the hole. Shit, ask Shaq. Ask Shaq could Jamel McGee do that and see what Shaq got to say. I ain't going to say nothing. Just ask Shaq. Shaq, what you think? Well, Jamel McGee, uh, he's softer than toilet tissue. The King James is just going to come in there. He going to ride on that ass. And Jamel Degree, you gonna be on Shaq Funnies again. Oh, thank you, Shaq. I thank you for that little commentary, man. Hey, right, man, good job anyway on TNT, man. I appreciate you, bro. And um, Shaq is running for sheriff too, man. Here in Atlanta, and um, I forgot what Cal- I think the Cab County. Big up to you, Shaq. Thank you for coming in. But yeah, man, that's what's gonna happen, man. You know. So I look at it like this: San Antonio. If you can get Leonard back healthy, you have a chance, you know, because Clay Thompson can't even hit the side of a boat. I don't know what's on his mind. And I said earlier during the season that one of them is going to have a problem with this being three of them out there come playoff time, and that's Clay Thompson. I bet you he will not recover from this. If Clay recovers from this, then I'll eat crow. But I don't think he's going to recover from this. Because his confidence was shot. Uh, Mark Jackson said the shot he misses just like a layup for him. But shit, he ain't make that layup. He wide the fuck open and hitting the back iron. So you know how that is. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think uh, I got a caller calling there. Okay. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where you calling from? What you want to talk about? Huh? You, you there? You there, Paul? Huh? Yeah? Oh, you there, Carl? My oh, man. You there? I, I hear a little bit. You... Oh, wow. I guess the call uh, mm, had a bad lot, had a bad extension. Mm, what's going on out there? When you call up here, you got to have a good phone line. <clears throat> Let me see. Let me see if I can uh, if I can get this caller back. I think I know who that was and whatnot. But um, yeah, man, um, it was it was it was it was uh, it was embarrassing to me because to be up by that many, man, you supposed to close the door. Ain't no team that goddamn good or that bad that they can come back and beat you like that. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? What you going to talk about? Chief, it's Microwave, man. We clear? Yeah, we clear, man. What's going on, Microwave? Hey, man. You know, you know. Um, realistically speaking, Chief, this is where we, where I got my start with you was during basketball playoff time. Yeah. What you mean, Golden State don't play no don't don't play no defense, man? They top three defensive <laughs> team in the in the league, bro. I never uh, seen I never seen Kevin Durant play defense before, and I've seen I've seen Kevin Durant play defense this year. I didn't even know he could play defense. Uh, okay. You said they top three this year. Yep. 
They was top. They was top. They was top five last year too, Chief. Uh, well, I mean, to me, I don't think they play good defense, man. You know, that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can bring a stat to me any day, but when it comes down to that money, uh, did they play top defense last year when Cleveland came back and whooped on that ass? Hey, man, when LeBron – when LeBron, first of all, can't nobody can guard Kyrie Irving. Nobody can guard LeBron James. When LeBron puts on a performance like that, I mean, what can you say? So I, I, I got you got me on that one. But realistically speaking, man, if you look at them dudes play a whole game, them dudes, they get a lot of steals. They get a lot of blocks as a team. They don't. They don't send the opposing um the, the opposing team to the free throw line that much. Like they really, they really are a good defensive team, which is why Steph Curry gets hidden so much as not being a good one on one defender is because of the way their team defense is constructed. Right. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, tell me this, right? So did they really, really defense? Um, did they really defense? Um, no, I caught a blank right there. Did they really defense? San, did they really defense San Antonio yesterday? Uh, no, 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 no. Yesterday they got punched in the mouth, and the only reason they responded is, you know, like you said, when Kawhi went down, I think Golden State looked at it and said, "We're not going to beat Houston and lose to these dudes by forty when they best player not on the court." So that was a little bit different. You know, they they, they definitely, um, I think yesterday, man, whatever Popovich did to his team in the beginning of the game prior to Kawhi getting hurt was excellent. And he outcoached, he outcoached Mike Brown, and he came out, and, he, and they punched them dudes in the mouth, man, and they couldn't respond until Kawhi went down. So, no, yesterday, no, um, it wasn't necessarily just the defense that they were playing. It was the defense that was being played on them as well, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, who expects LaMarcus Aldridge? This is only his second good game in the playoffs. It's only his second good game. So, you're not expecting LaMarcus Aldridge, or, or, or my, should I say, you expect LaMarcus Aldridge to do this every night, but he hadn't been doing it since he's been in San Antonio. But, um, nah, you're right. They, they, they wasn't doing nothing yesterday. Yeah, man, because uh, I, I, I just didn't see them really playing no tough D. What, what I saw was, San Antonio, the guys that was handling the ball, they just uh, came down the court, and when a man jumped in their face, they just bobbled the ball and threw it away. I seen about five times that happening. Yeah, but Chief, I mean, so what? You're not gonna you're not gonna give credit to poor offense on on the people that's that's opposing the offense, the defense. Like that's what I'm saying, like. There was a lot of sloppy turnovers once Kawhi went down. It's like the Spurs was like in, in shock that they didn't have Kawhi yet again. You know what I'm saying? And going up against Golden State is not going to win. You don't got Kawhi. But, I mean, if I'm if, if I'm in front of this dude and I jump in his face and he fumbled the ball, he, he fumbled the ball because I jumped in his face. That's a good thing. Well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see anything like that, man. Because um, if that was my team, I would have called timeout after the second one. And then I would just brought him over and over and just told him, like, listen, man, is y'all going to play some fucking ball or you just going to give them the game? Because I'll stop the game right now and tell them they won. You know? Because they was very sloppy. Look at the turnovers they had. Look at them. I mean, if you can, go back and watch the game a little bit. And watch the turnovers when Leonard went out the game. Yeah, yeah. See, you, 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 ah, ah. You know what I'm saying? Is that that ah, ah because you don't know what to say, or that's that ah, ah because you guard the name? Which one is it? No, I'm done gardening. I finished gardening about five minutes before I called you, bro. Uh. <laughs> about five minutes before I called. Hey, what you? I want to hear your thoughts on Houston, though, man. Um, I know you said you was you was trying to hold off and wait for me, but I I got a whole freaking library on this, man. So I, I want to hear your thoughts about Houston real quick, though, bro. Um, I think you was one of the people that picked you picked Westbrook for MVP anyway. Right. So I I, I want to hear how you feel about James Harden. Now, mind, mind you, bro, when we first started, when we first started this podcast stuff, you and Jungle was already doing y'all thing. I started calling into y'all show, right? And this was the the year that um, Houston came back on the Clippers when the Clippers had them 3-1. And in game seven, 